So today we're going to take a look at the Mosnagat 9130 PU sniper model. So the Russians actually developed their sniper program starting in the very early 1930s. They took sniping as a military standard capacity a lot more seriously than many other countries. Even what we'd think of as militarily intelligent and uh, on the ball Western countries. Um, starting in, in 1931, they actually got some advice and a lot of help from Germany, of all places, developing scopes. Uh, their early scopes, they had a variety of names in Russia. We kind of conglomerate them all under the name PE. Um, and these were actually a copy of a German scope design made by Zeiss. Um, like I said, they got some assistance manufacturing those. And uh, that was the early scope. Originally, it was mounted up here on a, a big six screw mount right on top of the chamber. They were they were really nice guns. Um, in fact, some of those were favored by very effective Soviet snipers through World War II. But uh, they manufactured those from 1931 through until about 1937. Um, in the, the mid to late 30s, they got a chance, the Russians did, to actually test the, the effectiveness of their sniping tactics and equipment during the Spanish Civil War. One of the things they found was that the, the PE scope, which it was a fixed four power scope, and it had an adjustable focus knob on it. Well, that focus knob tended to be a, an inlet for humidity and dust, and it would cause problems with the scopes. They just weren't all that durable. So in 37, they, they revised the design to what we now call the PEM, or modernized PE. And they got rid of that variable uh, focus knob, went to just a, a flat, fixed, four power, much simpler scope. Um, those, a few of them were mounted in the original over the chamber design, and then they also designed um, kind of a long, uh, curved, almost curved, uh, side-mounted scope mount for the PEM. Those are, are fairly rare scopes today. What ultimately became the, the Soviet standard for sniper rifles during World War II is this. This is the PU. Now this is obviously, this is obviously a simpler scope. It's a three and a half power, has a fairly small uh, field of view, but very simple to, to make and fairly durable. They, these were originally made for the SVT-40, the, the semi-auto rifle that the Soviets designed and fielded. There was a lot of hope that that would be, uh, take the place of the new, be the new standard sniping rifle for the Soviet army. Unfortunately, the SVT-40s in practice never really had the accuracy that they were hoping for with those scopes. So what they did is they took this very simple, cheap to mass produce PU scope that they designed and they adapted it to the 9130 with a side mount right here. Now, if we take a closer look at this, the mounting is very simple. We have, we have a screw right here that holds it in place. Once the screw is out, the scope just lifts right out. It has a recessed ball here at the front. That centers on this. Then we have gross elevation screws right here. So when I put it in, it goes in like that. The elevation screws hold it in place. And then this thumb screw locks it down. Now, the way that the gross windage was uh, adjusted was actually done at the factory. The original PU 9130s were all factory zeroed because in order to adjust the gross windage, you have to either grind down these, uh, these two circuits or uh, shim them if you need to get them farther out. So the original PUs were actually pretty accurate. They were, they were well zeroed and it was all done at the factory. This particular rifle is an aftermarket replica sniper. And you can tell that a couple ways. For one thing, the stock cutout is pretty crudely done here. An original Russian one would have been much better workmanship. Um, we can also tell that because it's not zeroed for windage. I had to adjust this quite a ways off to the left in order to get it on target at 100 yards. The reproductions, none of that gr uh, drilling or grinding or shimming has been done. So it's up to you to adjust them with the scope adjustments. Uh, an original PU sniper rifle would be very well zeroed from the factory. Um, a couple other things that we can take a look at here that point out that this is a reproduction. It's a 1940 dated rifle. The PU snipers, were they, they started production in 1942. So you'd never find an original one on a 1940 rifle. Um, this is also a Finnish capture rifle. Um, the Russians wouldn't, the, the Finns did capture some snipers, but uh, it's not that common to find them. 
even though this is a reproduction, it gives us a pretty good uh, feel for how the guns worked, how the, the sight picture is, and how they are to shoot. I'm not going to take a lot of time trying to shoot a real good group with this one, because it isn't actually a sniper rifle. Um, it didn't meet the original Russian spec for a PU sniper. So shooting a group with it isn't really going to tell us anything about the originals. Um, and it has a pretty lousy trigger on it, actually. But it's fun to shoot. So I'm going to grab some more ammo. I have a paper target out at 100 yards, and uh, we're just plinking up for fun today to see what we can get. So the, the sniper scope does get in the way of the stripper clips, so you do have to load these manually. The clip won't fit in there. I'm not shooting any particular fancy ammo today, just surplus. Surplus light ball. You can see how the bent bolt handle here is necessary in order to clear the body of the scope. A standard most Nagant bolt handle would hit that. So here's a view of the, the scope reticle in the PU scope. So you can see it's a, pretty, it's a pretty simple German post. The way they designed it, the width of that middle uh, sighting post, the vertical one, equates to 20 centimeters at 100 meters range, and the distance between the two horizontals equates to 70 meters at 100 meters range. So that's how you do your range estimation. Now you can see that this one is visibly offset to the left. That's because the windage and elevation adjustments actually adjust the reticle in the scope body. And I had to move this one off to the left in order to zero it because it wasn't zeroed at the factory. All right, so my first group of five shots was actually down here, and it was a, a lot tighter group than I was expecting. Uh, you can just barely see this one, but tag the side of the paper. Um, I figured if I was able to shoot a group that good, I ought to adjust the point of aim and try and bring one into the target. When I did that, uh, I, I got a group quite a bit larger, more like what I was really expecting to see. Um, I am, of course, not the world's greatest shot. Uh, the trigger on this rifle is pretty terrible and I'm using cheap surplus ammo. Obviously, it's occasionally capable of getting a really good group, but I think this is more of what I was actually expecting. Now, just to reiterate, this is not an actual as-issue Russian sniper. It's a, a put-together uh, reproduction. So I'll, take, I'll, I'll be more careful and, and try harder for a really good couple of groups when I can get my hands on an authentic sniper. Um, this doesn't really tell us anything about the quality of the sniper rifle, but it was fun to do. So as I'd said, the Russians issued over 275,000 of these rifles through by the end of production, at the end of World War II. Um, they did continue making them in smaller numbers after the war. Uh, major production ended in 1948. They did make a few into the 50s, although not many. Um, one interesting thing, the Russians actually used female snipers as well as men, uh, and some of them had very, very successful careers as snipers. Um, the most successful Soviet female sniper uh, had 192 kills to her name. Um, one of the best known at the time, and still today, is a woman named Ludmila Pavlichenko. She shot 187 Germans. She was then wounded by mortar fire and uh, actually got pulled off the line to do some PR type work. She ended up touring the United States. She had uh, an interview with President Roosevelt. She was given a commemorative rifle by the Winchester Company. And uh, she actually had a Woody Guthrie song written about her which uh, today not a whole lot of people remember, but that was back when Russia was our ally in the, the Great Patriotic War against Germany. So my thought is shooting this is kind of like what you would expect from a Russian sniper rifle. It works, they're very durable, they're effective, 
but they're not really all that comfortable or ergonomic. They could be a lot better. Um, one of the, the main issues I have with it is just the, the height of the scope over the bore. It's very hard to get a good cheek weld simply because, you know, it's your chin in contact with the stock here. Um, the Russians never used an issue cheek pad or anything. Um, I'm, I suppose some of the, the snipers in the field may have done that, but it was never a standard, um, standard design. Uh, the scope doesn't have a very good field of view. It's three and a half power, which actually is about standard for World War II, but it's certainly lower power than we would consider probably ideal today. Um, these guns were capable of pretty good accuracy. Um, you know, having one or one and a half minute of angle PU snipers is not that uncommon. This one, of course, isn't, but this isn't an original sniper anyway. It's, it's a standard 9130 made to look like a PU. Well, I'm going to do a little more shooting. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Tune back into ForgottenWeapons.com for more World War II sniper rifles. Die, he's a great patriotic sniper rifle. I think I'll leave the Russian accent to other people. Let's just do some shooting.